Hello, hello, hello. God bless you. You are welcome to this edition of the Prophetic Hour. We bless the holy name of God. The God we are serving is a mighty God. And we know and we believe that this God will begin to work His wonders and miracles even in your lives and destinies in the name of Jesus. We thank and we bless the holy name of God who has given us the grace to be here again today. For those who have been waiting for us to come on, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you very much. God will bless you, increase you, and prosper you. And the Lord will make you flourish and excel mightily and marvelously in the name of Jesus. I'm so excited to be able to come here, to come here today to this medium so that you and I can pray together, can talk together, and the Lord himself will begin to work his wonders and miracles, even in every life and destinies in the name of Jesus. I do appreciate you all, and I pray that the Lord will honor every viewer right now in the name of Jesus. He will grant you all your heart desire in the name of Jesus, and that which you are believing him for, he will work a miracle for you. You are welcome to Prophetic Hour, where we receive words that will encourage our soul and lift up our spirit. Words that will encourage our soul and lift up our spirit. And believe in God for a great thing, even this moment and this season, this hour, in the name of Jesus. My name is Chris, Pastor Chris of Body of Christ Center, a church, Pastor my wife, Pastor Funke, a church where Christ himself reigns supreme, and lives are touched and changed and transformed. And I know that God will begin to do a great work and a mighty work, even for you, even right now, in the name of Jesus. Amen. And don't forget that we are on two platforms. We are on two platforms. We are on um, Facebook. That's our Facebook address, as you can see on the screen. We are on Facebook. As you are joining us, God will bless, increase, and prosper you in the name of Jesus. Please, or those on Facebook, share on your timeline, share on your Facebook page, and also share amongst the groups that you belong to. And God will bless, honor, increase, and prosper. Let's get as many people as possible online today, and God will bless you in Jesus' name. And now, while we are sharing, I want to welcome those who have been with us. Sister Crystal, God bless you. I saw that you are the first time, and God will bless you in Jesus' name. Sister Samson, God bless you. Sister Olamu, may God bless you. And Sister Becky, God bless you. The first lady, God bless you. Sister Justin, from Italy, God bless you. Sister Buki, God bless you. Mommy Adeshala, God bless you, ma. I appreciate you. Professor Fumi Ojo, God bless you. You are welcome. Um, Sister Dickiness Lola, God bless you. Sister Helene, God bless you. We do appreciate you. Sister Sumbo, God bless you. God will increase and prosper you all. As I've joined today, the Lord will bless, increase and prosper you and honor you in the name of That's the people I can see on the screen. Uh, on the system right now, God will bless. And for those who are on YouTube, you know we are on YouTube also. Uh, Pastor Chris, God bless you on YouTube and God will increase and prosper you. Well, if you, we can see comments on both platforms, either on YouTube or Facebook. So whether you're on YouTube or Facebook, we'll be able to pick your comments and God will bless, increase and prosper. You know, this program is you declare with your fingers. When you declare with your, you believe in your heart, you talk with your mouth and also you declare with your fingers. And if your fingers are saying amen or I receive or whatever has been pronounced or said, you receive it in the name of your fingers works a lot. So make sure your fingers are highly trained for to receive a miracle today in the name of Jesus. I say once again, make sure your fingers are highly trained to receive your miracle even in the name of Jesus. I can see the goodness. Nancy, God bless you. You are welcome, 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 welcome. I can only see you if you make a comment. If you don't make a comment, I will not be able to see you and God will bless, increase and prosper you. I do appreciate you all in the name of Jesus. And this God will begin to work a miracle and signs and greatness even in your lives and destinies in the name of Jesus. Don't forget that um, we are our website and that's our website on the screen. That's our website on the screen. You can visit our website and tells you everything you need to know about the church, our pastor from or myself, and God will bless you mightily in the morning. And this is our church address, as you can see on the screen. We are inviting you this Sunday at 10 a.m. Come and I tell you, life shall never remain the same again. The God we are serving is a mighty God, and this same God will begin to do a great work and a mighty work. And don't forget, this program airs every Thursday, every Tuesday at 9 p.m. Every Tuesday at 9 p.m. PM. And God will bless, increase, and prosper. Don't forget the time is going um, for for every one of us, especially in UK and in Europe. The time is changing, so the clock is going backwards this Sunday. So don't forget that, and God will bless you, increase, and prosper you in the name of Jesus. You are all welcome, mightily and marvelously. And I believe that the Lord will begin to work His wonders and miracles, even in every life and destiny. And your life shall never remain the same again. The God we are serving is a great. Shall we pray, Father? We thank you. We bless you. We give you all the praise, glory, honor. 
Thank you, Lord. Every routine, you see, I see a hand. You know, when you see, a, I see a brush, and I see a hand, and I see the brush, brushing and you know, with the brush you use for to paint, to paint the wall or whatever you want to paint. And I see the brush, brush, and it's, and I see the brush just being used to 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 paint and, and cancel and rub over what has been written. I said, what is this God? And God says that I should declare and I should let the people know that whatever evil the enemy has written regarding anybody towards the end of this year, he has cancelled it. Every evil is cancelled by the blood. It is cancelled by the blood. Like every evil plan, every evil scheme, every evil device, every evil plan and agreement against anyone watching right now, between now and the end of this year, it has been cancelled. I say once again, it has been cancelled. And this second will begin to work its wonders and miracles even in your life. If that is you, just say cancelled by the blood. Tap it out. Cancelled by the blood. Cancelled by the blood. Father, we thank you. We give all the praise to you Father, for, for the grace you given to us to be here again, even in your presence where there is fullness of joy. I accept our thanks in Jesus' name. We come before you, mighty Father, every single Lord forgive in Jesus' name. Send your power into our midst. Holy Ghost, have your way. Prove yourself. Let your name be glorified. We come against every evil work of the enemy and we bind, we cast them to hell. In the name of Jesus, we cover ourselves with the blood of Jesus. We cover this program with the blood of Jesus. Have your way, O Lord. Prove yourself and let your name be glorified. Devil, we terminate and destroy your powers. Bless every viewer. Do a new work. Let your name be glorified. Father, Lord, we thank and we bless you. Touch every viewer, Lord. Lord, every viewer watching will receive a word that will transform their lives. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' precious and wonderful name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. And just the God was saying, once again, you are welcome, welcome, welcome. God will bless you. The King of Messiah, you are welcome in Jesus' name. Sister Cleo, you are welcome in the name of Jesus. God will bless you all. Sister Dutton, you are welcome in the name of Jesus. God will bless everyone as you are joining. Jehovah God will begin to work his wonders and miracles, even in your lives and destinies. In the name of Just invite as many people as possible. Let's get all our friends on board. And I know that our life shall never remain the same again. The way God will begin to work His wonders and miracles even in your lives and destinies in the name of So you are welcome, welcome, welcome. You know, we're talking about determined for a change in our series of um, supernatural intervention series where God supernaturally intervenes. And this God will begin to work His wonders and miracles even in your lives and every life in the name of Jesus. God is telling me, I see a storm, you know, like hurricane storm, and I see a hand still in it. I said, God, what is this? And God says that we should declare for those who have storms they are going through, we should declare still the storm. If you want God to steal the storm of your life, whatever the storm is, I see some people are going through storm of finances, some are going through storm of sickness, some are going through storm of loneliness, some are going through storm of depression, some are going through storm of stagnancy, some are going through storm of rejection. Whatever the storm is, just say the storm is silenced. The storm, the storm is silenced. The storm is silenced because God is beginning to is working his wonders and miracles. The storm is silenced and I declare that every, I should have that every storm in your life is silenced in the name of you. I say once again, every storm in your life is silenced in the still the storm. Still the, so every storm in your life is silenced because Christ is silencing every storm. And so try it either still the storm or every storm is silenced. Guess what? It will be silenced completely and totally in the name of Jesus. This God we are serving is a mighty God. Father, once again we thank you. Have your way. Let your name be glorified, honored and praised. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' marvelous and mighty name we pray. There's somebody that when you sleep, God is telling me now, you see your family members who are dead. You see your family members who are dead. Every now and then they come to your dream. Today, I cancel that link. I cancel that because when it happens, things don't go well with you. I come against those powers and I cancel it. That demon appearing as a family member, I bind that demon, I cast that demon to hell in the name of Jesus. And I declare and I decree you are free in the name of Jesus. I declare you are free in the name of Jesus. I declare once again you are free in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. We give all the praise. In Jesus' precious and wonderful name we pray. I see that cord tying you to that family member being cut off. I see the cord cut off. If that is you, just say the cord has been cut off. It has been cut off. The cord is cut. The cord is cut. The cord is cut. And when you tell that the cord is cut, guess what? From today, this night, you'll never see those family members again in your dream. Because the Bible says, what has the living got to do with the dead? The living has nothing to do with the dead. So, the cord 
is caught. The cord is caught and God will begin to bless everyone mightily and marvelously in the name of Jehovah because the Lord has caught the cord and Jehovah God will begin to work his wonders and miracles even in your lives and destinies in the name of Jesus. Amen, amen. Do you have your Bible? You want to go into the word of God? You have your Bibles? We want to go into the word of God straight away. I believe that God has so much for us and we begin to work his wonders and miracles even in every life in the name of Jesus. The book of Matthew, Matthew chapter 15, 21 to 28. Matthew 15, 21 to 28. Matthew 15, 21 to 28. It is well with your soul. I say once again, it is well with your soul. So better that up. It is well with my soul. The peace of God that surpasses every understanding will be your portion. The moment you type it out, it is well with my soul. The peace of God that surpasses every understanding shall be your portion. So type it out. It is well with my soul. It is well with my soul. As you type it out, guess what? It begins to be well with your soul, even right now, mightily and marvelously in the name of Jesus. The book of Matthew chapter 15, verses 21 to 28, but just verses 21 to 22 for our discussion today, verses 21 to 22. Father, Lord, we thank there's somebody watching, you are worried regarding your child, you are worried regarding your child, not children, child, just one particular child, and I hear the Spirit of God saying that he's in control, he's in control. Don't be worried about that child, God has... The child in his hands, he has full control. If you believe that God is in control and he will sort things out, even before the end of this year for that child, just tap it out, he is in control. Jesus is in control. Jesus is in control. That's for those souls. Child, God is not a mature, just one child, one child. Jesus is in control. You are perplexed, you are worried, you have been, some of you have been, even been crying because of that child, you have been down, when I say child, it can be adult, it can be youth, it can be whatever, but it's a child to you. God is just tapping, Jesus is in control. God is working a miracle behind that child and there will be a turn. So put your mind at rest, you come back on this same program to testify to the glory of God regarding that child. It is done. So now let's go to the word of God, the book of Matthew. Chapter 15, 21 to Matthew 15, 21 to 22. Only we'll read today. Matthew 15, 21 to 22. Matthew 15, 21. I believe we are there already. Matthew 15, 21 to 22. And the Bible says, And Jesus went away from there, and withdrew to the district of Tyre and Sidon, 22. And behold, a Canaanite woman from that region came out and was crying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David. My daughter is severely oppressed by a demon. Amen, amen, amen. Father, we thank and we bless and we worship you. We give you all the praise, the glory, the honor. Marvelous King, accept our thanks in the name of Jesus. As we are going into your word, Father, Father, go with us, speak to us. Let your name be glorified, honored, and praised. Begin to have your way. Touch us like never before. Speak to us. Open our understanding. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you, Lord. I see a hand. A hand. And the hand is a witch's hand. I see a hand. And I see the hand having a cup. And wanting to give somebody who is watching. And this has happened not once or twice, well, but once or twice in the dream of this individual. I see the hand. And go open my eyes and I see his cup of bitterness. Cup of bitterness. And, the, and which is, wants to give this individual bitterness. Now, but I see that hand coming out. That hand coming out with the sword. And cutting off the, the witch's hand. And pouring out the, the, the cup of the water of bitterness bitterness and i declare no bitterness if that is you you are having dreams somebody is bringing a cup to you or somebody is just trying to make you take something or eat something in your dream just say bitterness back to sender bitterness back to send Tap it out very well bitterness back to sender because that cup or that thing they want to give to you is bitterness just have that bitterness back to sender bitterness 
back to sender and you shall go back to the sender in Jesus. Please, as you know, let's share, share, share. Let's get sharing. Let's share to as many people as possible. God is working wonders and miracles and God will begin to do a great work and a mighty work even in your lives and destinies. You are not watching by accident but by divine appointment. For those who are first timers, you are welcome. This is the prophetic hour where we receive words that would encourage our soul and lift up our spirit. Words that would encourage our soul and lift up our spirit. So, you are not watching by accident. So, stay tuned. I tell you, your life shall never remain the same again. Welcome newcomers and God bless you. God will increase and prosper you mightily and marvelously in the name of Jesus. This God will begin to work a miracle and great things even in your lives and destinies right now in the name of Jesus. It is well with your soul. Amen, 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 and amen. Amen, 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 and amen. And we know that this God will begin to do a great work and a mighty work even in every soul right now in the name of Jesus. As we have been, as you know, we have been talking about supernatural intervention series. Supernatural intervention series. And we we're talking about how God can supernaturally intervene in the affairs of man. Now, this is part four of this uh, determined for a change. Now, if you have missed parts one, two and three don't worry go on our youtube or facebook page if you are on youtube the channel click on um, playlist and when you click on playlist then click on um, um determine 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 for a change and begin to watch uh, parts one two and three and if you are on facebook go to our playlist no just yes, go to our videos and click on determine for a change and then can watch parts one two and three and god will begin to bless you and work wonders and miracles even in your lives and destinies in the name of just so determination is the key for change determination is the key for change once you are determined in life know what your change is sure and your change is guaranteed in the lord it is sure and guaranteed. Top it up. My change is guaranteed in the Lord. I know it's long, but top it up. My change is guaranteed in the Lord. My change is guaranteed in the Lord. It's only God that can give us change, but you also have a role to play. You must be determined for a change. And I pray that our change shall come in the name of Jesus. We'll be talking about the book of Matthew, Matthew chapter 15, 21 to 28, but we're talking about 21 and 22. Now, how can I get a change? How can I experience a change? How can the change be my portion? We spoke about some steps, steps that you and I need to take. We said number one, number one, that you need to let go. Let go of those matters. And we made example of where we read the previous verses that, you know, we have read 15, 21 to 22. But if you read that same 15, 1 to 20, 21 to 20, talks about how Jesus let go of what they were discussing, let go of the issue. When he has spoke, he told them that it is not what goes into a man that defies a man, but what comes out of a man that defies a man. This defies a man. And he let go of the matter. What I will say, when you want a change in your life, you must let go of matters, let go of issues, let go and let go and let go. What are you willing to let go? What are you willing to adjust? Or what are you willing to change? If you want to know more, go to our previous and a previous episodes and you'll be blessed in Jesus. Number two, we spoke about time out, time out, time. There's always a time out. Jesus went away, I'm reading Matthew 15, 21. Jesus went away from there and redrew. Time out, he redrew. When you have time out in life, we need time out. Time out to ponder, time out to think, time out to refire. That's when we began to talk about our re. What's your re? That is, you refire, you rethink, you refresh, and you regain. That's time out. Time out. You need time out in your life, in your destiny. You need time out with God, staying with God, being alone with God. That's time out. When last did you have a time out with God? Staying with God and saying, God, I am not living until you bless me. We need that time. God will help us in the name of Jesus. And number three, last week, we spoke about behold, behold, what can you see? After a time out, what can you see? The Bible says in um, Matthew 15, 22, and behold, and behold, that is, something happened that is out of the usual. And behold, something happened. And behold, I will do it. And behold, when there's behold in the word of God, it's catching our attention. So what can you see clearly? Today, 
we are moving on. And I believe that the Lord will work His wonders and miracles even in your lives and destinies in the name of Jesus. So once again, God will begin to work His wonders and miracles even in every life and destiny. For those who are watching, do you know what? I see a turnaround. I see a turnaround. You know, the best way that God is showing me, you know, this merry go that people turn around, turn around, turn around. I see, and I said, what is this God? Just like a turntable. You know, those days when you used to play your LP on a turntable, I said, turn around. And God says that there's a turnaround. The, the, in this season, in this season, in this season, there's a turnaround. In the season that I'm speaking now, in five minutes, there's going to be a turn around in life. Now, if you want a turn around, just type it out. Turn around, turn around. Turn around in any area you want. Just tap it out. Turn around. I see the angels of God begin to turn lives around for the best. Begin to adjust lives. Begin, they, they, they are working on lives to make lives improve. They are working on lives to make life a success. They are working on lives to make life move forward. They are working on lives to make life achieve their destiny. Turn around. If you want a turn, just tap it out. Turn around. Turn around. And you know what? The Spirit of God begins to work on us and there will be a turn around for you, even right now, in the name of Jesus. Turn around. Number four, today we are going on, we are going on number four. Number four, we are talking about determined for a change. And point four, out of the share. And the question tonight is that, are you still in your share? Out of the share. Are you still in your share? The Bible says in, you know, all these points are taken from where we have read the book of Matthew chapter 15, 21 to 28. But we are treating 22 now, we don't 21 and 22. And 22 says, And behold, a Kenneth woman from that region came out. She came out. That is, she came out. She came out of her share. When you look at this woman, I believe she has been in hiding for a long time because what was taking place in her life was something shameful. She had to hide her daughter because she couldn't take her daughter out. She had to hide. Sometimes she had to stay indoors and hide behind closed doors and shut the door because the daughter would scatter things because the, how do we know? In the end, the Bible said that she made the daughter asleep on the bed. For the Bible to emphasize that that means that she usually doesn't sleep on the bed. So she was cut out of the house. So the woman was inside a shell. Now, if somebody is inside a shell and remains inside a shell, guess what? People who are supposed to see them cannot see them. The progress is supposed to make, they cannot make progress because they are hidden. They are hidden. But the Bible says, this woman came out. She came out of the shell. She came out of hiding. She came out of the shell. For example, a good example about shell is about snail, tortoise, or turtle. Shell, when it's turtle or snail or uh, tortoise want to eat something, they come out of their shell and they eat. If they remain in their shell and don't come out, guess what? They will die there. They will not die in the shell. You need to come out of your shell. Tell me, tell me that I am coming out of my shell. I am coming out of my shell. I am coming out of my shell. You need to come out of your shell. It doesn't matter what has made you to hide and be hidden in your shell. But right now, you need to come out. Shell, as this year is going to an end, are you going to stay in that shell forever? Are you going you say in that shell for 2020 to end, you need to come. Somebody say, I am coming out. I am coming out. Because if you don't come out, if nobody comes out, if you don't come out, guess what? That person will remain in their shell. When it's raining, when it's sunny, when good things are passing by, if that person remains in their shell, they will not see anything. And that is not your portion. That's why you see, you must come out out of your shell. The Bible says, and behold, a Canaanite woman from that region came out. She came out. She refused to be in hiding any longer. She came out of the shell, of the shell of predicament, of the shell of sorrow, of the shell of disgrace. I don't know what type of shell you want to come out, but begin to type it out. What is what I've been shelling you in? If I use that word, what has been shelling you in? What has been hiding you? Now tell yourself, I am coming out. What is the shell coming out from? Is it sorrow? Type it out. Is it disaster? Type it out. Is it death? Type it out. Is it sickness? Type it out. Coming out of the shell. What type of shell are you coming out from? You need to know the type of shell that has held you down and you need to declare, I am coming out of this shell. I am coming out of this shell. Out of the shell. Out of the shell. Is it a shell of shame? 
come out. Is it a shell of repeated evil? Come out. Is it a shell of backwardness? Come out. Whatever the shell may be, you must be determined to come out if you want a change. Anybody who wants a change does not stay in a shell. They come out. Everybody who has succeeded in this world, they are not staying indoors. They come out. They go out there. You need to come out. I am coming out. I am coming out. I am coming out. I am coming. You need to come out of your shell. Why? Because anyone who remains in that shell will not experience a change. Look at this woman. She came out. Now, talking about this shell, she came out. Three things can happen if about this shell. It's either you come and she was ready to come forth. She came forth. She was ready to come forth or there are things that can, that, that can happen. You can either come forth or still be in hiding or waiting. Three things. You can come forth, you can be hiding, in hiding, or you are still waiting. Some people are waiting in their shell. I wonder what they are waiting for. When God has called them forth to come out, you need to come out of your shell. You need to come out of your shell. I said before, name, name the shells you need, the shell you need to come out from. You need to come out of your shell. No longer hide. Tell yourself, I am no longer in hiding. I am no longer in hiding. Because it's either you come forth, or that person is in hiding, or that person is waiting. I am waiting. I am waiting. You are believing God for a job, and you are waiting. I am waiting in your house, just sitting down, and you are waiting. You are not going out there. You are not checking the internet. You are not applying. You didn't update your CV. You didn't upgrade your CV. You see the same CV you had five years ago. You are still having. You did not put things that can that will attract, and you don't even send it out. And you say, I am waiting. I am waiting for the Lord to speak. I am waiting for. I am. What are you waiting for? So people will say they are waiting and they are waiting in that shell and they have waited for 10 years, 5 years, 15 years, achieving nothing because they say, I am waiting. What are you waiting for? What are you waiting for? Come out of that waiting period. Come out of the shell. Stop hiding in your shell. Come forth. You know and she came out and she came out. She came forth. She came forth. She refused to be in hiding. You know, Jesus was in a foreign town. Jesus was in a foreign town and he went there, you know, usually when you want to have a good time with your wife or with your husband and you're tired and you want to relax, what do you do? You travel and go for holiday. You go out of your region, you go out of your norm and you go out maybe three days, five days and you come and you are refreshed, you understand? So Jesus left the whole of Israel to go to this place to refresh for some few minutes. But you know what? The woman came out. The woman came out. The woman came out. Are you coming forth? She came out of hiding. Now, let's quickly check the Bible and see those who came out of hiding. Some the Lord called, some they just decided of coming out. Because if anybody remains in hiding, change will not come. Our change must come. My change must come. If you don't take a step, change will not come. Change comes with a step. Somebody type that out. Change comes with a step. Change comes with taking a step. Change does not come by wishing. Change does not come by dreaming. Change does not even come by desiring. Change only comes by a step. What step are you taking to enforce change in your life? That is important. What step or what steps have you taken to enforce a change in your life and destiny? Change only happens. Change only comes through a step. So, what are the steps that you are taking? I've come to challenge you today because this year is going to an end very, very soon. By next week, uh, by the end of next week, October will be over. We are in November. Just one month left. So, what are the steps you are taking to enforce, to bring, to demand a change in your life and destiny? How determined are you for a change? And so, again, how determined are you for a change? Change doesn't just come by folding of arms. And by daydreaming, and by wishing, and by saying, my God is more than, you are sitting on the same spot, my God is more than able, he can do and undo, for with God nothing shall be impossible, I am, I am moving forward, I make, and you are sitting down in your chair, you are not even making any progress, you must come out of your shell, enough is enough, you must come out of your shell. So, she came out, so are you ready to come forth, or are you still in hiding, or are you waiting? I wonder what you are waiting for. Go out there. 
you are believing God to get married. And all the while, as a lady, you are locking yourself up in the room. And you are wishing, and what are you waiting for? You are hoping that the man will come and knock your door. The man will not knock your door. You have to go out there. And the man will discover you out there. As long as you are staying indoors, no man will come and discover you indoors. You need to go out there. Go out there and let your Adam discover you as a woman. And dress well, look well, smell nice. Go out there. Stop deceiving yourself by saying, I'm waiting, I'm waiting. I've prayed. I'm waiting on the Lord. You have prayed. You have fasted. Yes. Now, wipe your face. Look nice. Put everything on. Look so nice. And get out there and let the man locate you. Stop giving that excuse of, I am waiting. I am waiting. I am waiting. Waiting for what? Go out there. Someone said, go out there. Go out there. Go out there. Go out there. So looking at the Bible, looking at the Bible, let's look at people who waited in the Bible, who came out of their shell. Look at Abraham. Abraham was in a good place enjoying himself, thinking that that is the best. His father was moving on in Genesis chapter 11, and suddenly the father died. And Abraham did not carry out, he did not continue that vision of moving, 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 and he stayed put in one point. It took God to appear to Abraham in my, in in Genesis chapter 12, and told him, Abraham, get out of their father's house, get out of their kingdom, get out of their country, and go to a land that I will show you. He took God to bring Abraham out of his chair. Abraham was sitting there enjoying, but thank God that God is a merciful God. God located Abraham and took him out of his shell. Now, you need to get out of your shell. If Abraham had not moved, if God had not appeared to Abraham, guess what? The story of Abraham will not be in the Bible because he did not move. He did not do anything. He got out of the shell of his hiding. You need to get out of your shell. Whatever step you need to take, make sure you take it. And the Bible says, Abraham woke up in the morning and took a step and took all his substance, took all the servants, took his wife, took his nephew, and they moved. They never knew they were, where they were going, but because God had spoken, they came out. What God wanted him to do was come out of that shell, of that shell of country, of that shell of kindred, of that shell of family, and the guy came out. And the guy became a success story. Why? Because he came out of the shell. What are you waiting for? So I am coming out. I am coming out. I am coming out. Out of the shell. And the Bible says in Matthew 15, 22, And behold, a Canaanite woman from that region, what? Came out. She came out. She came out. You must come out. Somebody say, I am coming out. I am coming out. I am coming out. Look at Saul. Saul in the Bible. I'm talking about King Saul. When, 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 when um, Samuel, Prophet Samuel had located him, prayed for him, and told him he would become king. Now the whole of Israel was gathered together. I'm talking about out of the shell, out of the shell, out of the shell. Are you still waiting in the shell? Or are you, are you, are you, are you still hiding in your shell? You need to come out. 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 And I pray that as you come out of that shell, the Lord will break the shell. Because if the shell is still there, people can still go back into that shell. The, when, once you come out of this shell today, that shell is broken. You are not going back again. No backwardness. You are moving forward. I declare once again, once you leave that shell and you come out of that shell, you come out of your hiding, you come out of your waiting, you come out of your procrastination, guess what? The shell will be broken completely for you not to return. You see, when you come out of that shell, it's a point of no return. Somebody type it out. Point of no return. When you come out of that shell, it's a point of no return. You are not returning back. You are not returning back. Tell me, Tabitha, I refuse to return. I refuse to return back. I refuse to return back. Tell me, Tabitha, because you need to confess it. I refuse to return back. No point of no return. Point of no return. I refuse to return back. The Bible says that the whole Israel were gathered together. Everyone from Dan to Bethlehem, they were gathered together because the prophet and the seer and the priest had called a big meeting. And guess what? Saul was in a shell. Read the Bible. The Bible said, Saul was hiding in a place. He hid. He took the prophet of God to bring Saul out, out of his shell. Saul was in a shell. He was hiding. He was, I don't know if he was afraid. I don't know what made him hide. But Saul was hiding in a shell. 
It was there. And they called and they called. It took the prophet of God to go into the spirit. And the Lord said, it's behind there. Go and check it. And they checked behind there. And they found it. And it came out of the Jerusalem. He stood up. And the guy stood up. When he stood up, he was taller than every man in Israel. You know, many times people portray Saul as an ugly man. Saul was no ugly. Go and take the Bible very well. The Bible said, Saul was very handsome, very beautiful. He stood up. He stood up shoulder high. Nobody was at his level. He was very, very high. If for somebody to stand out, you know those basketball players that are very tall. When they stand, they stand tall. So I was like something like that. He stood tall and handsome. And I was like, ah, that is it. He came out of his share. You shall come out. Somebody say, I am coming out. You shall come out of your share. You shall come out. I declare and decree. You are coming out of your share. I say once again, you are coming out of your share. You know, there are many places whereby people are put in share, but you must come out. You must come out. Look at David. Take, you are taking the journey in the Bible. Look at David. David was in his share. He thought he was prospering. I can imagine the day he killed the lion. He was so happy. The day he killed the bear, he was so happy. The day he learned to play a harp, the harp, he was so happy. The day he was able to be the shepherd of the sheep, he was so happy. He was so glad. He thought that was his destiny. He thought being a shepherd boy was his destiny. But God had a greater calling for him. Guess what? When the time came for him to come out of his shell, God sent for him. They sent for David, and the boy came, and God told Samuel, anoint him, for that is him. That's the person I have chosen. Why? Because God <coughs> had to call David out of it. Sometimes we are doing things that we think that is the way, but I pray that God will open our eyes and call us out of that shell we think we are prospering or doing, because there's a greater assignment. David that thought he killed, um, he killed a lion and a bear and was happy. In the end, he killed Goliath. That was his destiny. But he was hiding behind a shepherd boy. He was hiding behind uh, shepherding a sh behind the sheep, not knowing that God wanted him to shepherd the whole nation of Israel. I declare tonight, as you are listening, you are coming out of your shell. Even if people try to put you in a shell, I, you are coming now. Somebody tell me, I am coming out. I am because shell is a bad place. You need to come out of your shell. If this woman we're talking about in Matthew 15 22 remains at home in a shell she would have lost the opportunity of her daughter being healed but she came out she came out of the shell she came out of the house i am not waiting again i refuse to wait even though jesus is on uh, vacation if i can use that word he's on vacation i am going to call jesus in this vacation period i'm going to talk to him because he needs to deal with my situation i am determined for a change i am determined for a change. I am determined for a change. He came out of the shell. Let me ask you, I want to answer this, everyone who is on board now. Are you still in your shell? Are you still hiding in your shell? I want you to answer. Are you still in your shell? Are you still hiding in your shell? Are you still waiting in your shell? You better come forth. Come out. 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 You better come forth and come out. Look at Jonah. Jonah that tried to escape. In the end, the fish became a shell to him. For three days, and he was in a shell. But what was he doing? He was praying. Oh Lord, release me from my shell. Release me. Release me. I need to comfort. Comfort. I need to go and do my assignment. And in the end, God had him. Was it? God had him in from the belly of the fish that swallowed him. God had him. God had him, and God told the fish, spoke to the fish, go and vomit him at the shore. And he went to vomit him, and Jonah came out of the shell and was able to carry his assignment. There are many of you out there, you have an assignment, you need to pray that, Lord, whatever is holding me back in my shell, release me. Just as Jonah, Jonah prayed, he prayed, and he came out of his shell. So you can pray your way out of the shell. You can pray your way out of the shell. Somebody tap it out. You can pray your way out of the shell. You can pray your way out of the shell. Don't say, I am waiting for a prophet. I'm waiting for a man or woman of God to prophesy to me. Prophesy. Hey, prophesy. Prophesy. I'm not, I don't have anything against prophecy. Prophecy is good. But you know, you need 
to take action to come out of your shell. Don't wait for a man or woman of God to speak to you before you make that move to come out of that shell. You need to get out of that shell that the enemy has put you in, that you have put yourself in, that circumstances have put you in. You need to come out of that shell. What are you still doing in that shell? Come out of that shell. I declare and declare, come out of that shell. Hmm. Look at Matthew. Go into the Bible. Look at Matthew. Matthew was a tax collector. He was a blessed man. And every day, from morning to evening, he would sit in the tax booth. That's what the Bible said. He would sit there, collecting money. He would thought that, okay, I have made it. I have prospered. And how do we know that Matthew is a blessed man? I would say, how do we know that he's a blessed man? Because he was blessed. But you know, the day that it came for him to be called out of his share, the shell of uh, the tax booth, the shell of uh, uh, collecting money, the shell of making money. God, Christ said, come, follow me. Come, follow me. And the guy followed Jesus immediately. He came out of the shell of the tax booth. He came out of that shell. And because his destiny was not to be collecting tax all over the place, he had a higher calling. He had a higher destiny. But he was held down by the booth. He was held down by worldly affairs. He was held down by all these things. He did not realize until Christ came and said, Levi, follow me. And the guy, the guy left everything. He left the documents. He left all the money. He left everything and followed Jesus. He came out of the shed. May you come out of your shell. I declare once again, may you come out of the shell. Whatever shell has held you down, I declare, whether shell of demon or, or whatever, may you come out of your shell. And how do I know that this guy was blessed? Because that same evening, hmm, that same evening, he had a feast. He invited Jesus with his disciples, with all those who are following. And you know Jesus is somebody that doesn't work alone. He works with the crowd. If somebody isn't that blessed, number one, the house will not contain. The house contain them. Because there were publicans there, there were Pharisees there, he invited all his friends there, and he invited Jesus there with all his disciples, and they all sat down, and he was able to feed them. And they all ate and were satisfied. So this guy is not that he wasn't he's a rich man, blessed man. So he's blessed. But he still needed to come out of the shell. Are you out of your shell? Look at the man with a legion. He was held down by demons in a shell. The man had a great destiny, but demons turned his destiny around. And he became a man that was staying in the grave. He became a man that was chained down and broke. Overnight, the man became incredible hawk. If I use that word. Overnight, the man became incredible hawk. That is, he could break chains. Nothing could hold him now. And the man had a loudspeaker voice. He could cry and talk and talk and talk and everyone here. But that wasn't his destiny. But the day came when Jesus looked at him and called him out of the shell. The shell that has held him down. The demons and legions that have held him down. Guess what? That day, the man was set free. And what did he become? He became an evangelist. He began to go and preach. The voice that he was using, that was powerful, that demons were hiding under, that they covered his voice in a shell. He began to use that same voice, same energy he had, same zeal he had, same strength he had. He began to use that. And the Bible said that he went to Decapolis, that is 10 cities, and began to tell people what Jesus has done for him. And people began to marvel, and they became they became Christians and became born again because of the testimony of the man. But the man went. Why? Because, you know, demons had held him that they knew this man is a great evangelist. But they held him in a shell. I declare, whatever demon, whatever power, whatever cause is holding you down, I declare, you are free in the name of Jesus. I said, you are free in the name of Jesus. You are free, free, free. Tell me, tell me, I am free. You are free in the name of Jesus. You know, I'm going on, and time will not permit me to begin to mention people in the Bible, but you are free in the name of, look at Jabez. Jabez had a great destiny. Because the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 9, and Jabez was more honorable than his brother. But guess what? He was held in a shell by a curse. The curse held him down. The curse, the curse like a shell, and the curse put him in the shell, and the shell hold, held him down, and the curse bamboozled him. The curse worked against him. There's nothing that he did that worked out. Why? Because he was held down 
by a curse. But what happened? He cried out to the God of Israel, Deliver me, save me, make me expand, make me enlarge, make me prosper, make me succeed. You know you need to cry out. To come out of that shell, you need to come out. We don't, we don't want to hear the story of who has caused you, how long they have caused you, what energy they used to cost you, what altar they used, what shrine they used, what demon they used, what, what altar they... No, we don't want to hear that. All we want to hear you crying out and you are free. That's all the story we want to hear. You are free. 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 Jabez cried out. And guess what happened to Jabez? Jabez was free. The Lord delivered him and broke the shell. He came out of that shell, of course, and he became a honorable man. Why? Because he knew the shell that was fighting him. He fought against that shell and God released him and he became a honorable man. What shell is holding you down? Don't allow any shell to hold you down. I say once again, do not allow any shell to hold you down. Look at Paul and Silas. They had an assignment and the enemy used, tried to use prison to hold them down. So you are not preaching anymore. Enough of demon casting. Enough of tongue speaking. Enough of prayers. Enough of evangelism. Enough of going for, to a missionary trip. Enough of, or enough of depopulating the kingdom of the enemy and populating the kingdom of God. Enough. But what happened? In the prison at midnight hour, they said, you prison cannot hold us down. We refuse to be held down by this prison that is a shell. And they cried out. And they prayed. And they praised. And guess what? The prison gave way. The shell gave way. Do you know that in prison and praying, and fasting and seeking God. Do you know what? The shell will give way. I declare every shell to give way. Somebody say, tap it out. My shell is giving way. The shell is giving way. The shell is giving way. The shell is giving way. And the shell gave way. The shell of prison gave way. The Bible says that all the prison doors were open, all their fetters were open, and all what they used to hold them gave way, and they became free men. The shell could not hold them. I declare the shell will not hold. Look at Jesus. As I said, the shell could not hold. Look at Jesus. Death could not hold Jesus. They put Jesus in the tomb. When he was dead, dead body, they put Jesus in the tomb. They closed the tomb. They sealed the tomb. And they put soldiers in front of the tomb. But guess what? When the time came, the tomb as a shell could not hold Jesus. Jesus came forth because he's the resurrection and the life. Jesus came forth. The soldiers could not stop Jesus coming forth. The tomb could not stop Jesus coming forth. Death could not stop just coming from the stone could not stop just coming from the grave clothes could not stop Jesus coming forth he broke forth he broke the pangs of death he broke the the tomb he broke everything and he came forth somebody say everything is breaking for my sake every shell is breaking for my sake Every shell is breaking for my sake. Every shell is breaking for my sake. Out of the shell. You must come out of the shell. What shell is holding you down? God has called you to go there and go and do something great for him. Stop hiding in the shell. Stop giving excuses. Go out there and possess and do and carry out the assignments. Stop saying in the shell. Remember those that Jesus called. Jesus called them. Those who are... Um, the parable of those who walked uh, in the morning and in the evening. But said, even one hour before closing time, just went and called them and said, what are you doing? Nobody. And just brought, they told them Jesus, the parable, the, the, the man brought them out of their shell and they walked for one hour and he blessed them. You see, you need your helper to call you out of that shell. My helper locates me to call me out. Sometimes you need your helper, somebody that will speak to you, somebody that will talk to you, somebody that will talk sense, sorry to you, somebody that will talk sense into you, so that you wake up and be able to come out of that shell. That shell has held you back enough. Enough is enough. The assignment of the shell terminates now. The assignment of the shell over your life terminates now. Somebody say the assignment of the shell terminates. The assignment of tap it out. This the assignment of the shell. Terminate. You must break it. You must break it and come forth. I say once again, are you coming forth? Or are you still hiding? Or are you still waiting? The Bible says, and behold, that's Matthew 15, 22, the first part. And behold, a Kenneth woman from that region came out. She came out, no longer in hiding. She came out of the shell. I declare and I decree, every shell is broken right now. And the, I say once again, every shell is broken right now in the name of Jesus. I will stop there. Father, we thank you. We give you all the praise, glory, honor. 
Thank you, Lord, for your word we have heard about the shell that we need to come out of the shell. It's our own decision to come out, Lord, with your help, with the people you sent to us. Lord, we declare we are coming out, we are out already. No shell is holding us back any longer. No shell, no shell is keeping us in hiding any longer. No shell is keeping us waiting any longer. We are out. We have come forth. Just as that woman came forth, Lord, we are out of the shell. We are out of hiding. We are out of waiting. And we are possessing our possession. We demand the change. And the change is taking place in our lives right now in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for that change. Thank you, Lord, for the reason from that shell. In Jesus' precious and wonderful name we pray. Somebody type, Hallelujah, I am free. Hallelujah, I am free. Hallelujah, I am free. Amen, amen, amen. I believe you are blessed and we thank God. The God we are serving is a mighty God. And this thing will be doing works, wonders and miracles, even in your lives and destinies in the name of Jesus. If you are out there, you have not given your life to Christ, you need to come out of the shell of sin. Shell of sin. Don't allow sin to hold you down. Anyone who is not born again is still in the shell of sin, shell of flesh. But guess what? You can make that shell that today I am coming out of that shell. Shell of sin, disgusting shell. And how can you do that? By just confessing and saying after me. And after that, guess what? You are out of the shell into the light. Father, we thank you. I come before you. I know I'm a sinner and I cannot save myself. Lord Jesus, save me and deliver me out of the shell of sin and Give me your Holy Spirit to empower me. Forgive me of all my sins and cleanse me with your blood. Give me your Holy Spirit to empower me and save me from the devil. Thank you, Lord, for answering me. Thank you, Lord, for writing my name in the book of life. I bless and Lord, I have backslidden, backslidden back into the shell. Lord, I am sorry, I have backslidden, Lord. I come back to you today. Accept me the way I am. Remold me and remake me. And Lord, give me your Holy Spirit to empower me. Thank you, Lord, for answering my prayers in Jesus' precious and wonderful name. If you are just said this prayer, guess what? You are born again for those who are doing it for the first time. And for those who are vaccinated and coming back, guess what? God has accepted you the way you are. And God, if you are living in London, that's our church address as you can see on the screen. Come on Sunday, Pastor Funke and myself, we are waiting to welcome you with open arms. You know, we cannot hug you or shake you or whatever, but open arms from afar. Welcome you and God will bless you in Jesus' name. 10 o'clock on Sunday. Don't forget the time clock goes backwards this Sunday. 10 o'clock and God will bless you in Jesus' name. And for those who are living outside London, look for a Bible-believing church to go to or outside UK, wherever your region is, go Look for a Bible believing church and go there and be blessed. And God begin to work His wonders and miracles, even your lives and destinies, in the name of Jesus. I really appreciate everyone for watching, for joining. God will bless you. I quickly want to tell you about our online programs. About our online programs. Our online programs. Um, every Wednesday, as tomorrow, by God's grace, we have Bible study. Our Bible study is interactive. Our Bible study is interactive. So join us, Pastor and myself, on, on tomorrow at 7 p.m interactive bible so we're talking about the marks of a true christian as john god will bless you in jesus name and also um sundays we have couples forum where we talk about how to stay together in love peace and harmony make sure you join us and god will bless you all in jesus name and then my dear wife Pastor Funke comes with hair my cry every sunday at 6 a.m mondays at 11 p.m and Wednesdays at 1 p.m. So it's going to, she's going to come tomorrow 1 p.m. Make sure you join and God will bless in and prosper you. And don't forget, we have prophetic hour every every Tuesday like this at 9 p.m. And restoration hour Thursdays at 9 p.m. Join us. Very powerful. And God will begin to work His wonders and miracles even in your lives and destinies in the name of Jesus. Because the God we are serving is a mighty God. And don't forget, please don't forget to like our Facebook page. Love our Facebook page. And share share it. So like it, follow it, share it. Like it, follow it, share. Very important. You see, when we finish this program and you are going out, when you get to our Facebook page, click on follow it. F follow it. When you follow it, then you begin to get a notification when Pastor Funko and myself we are coming on or we are coming on jointly, and God will begin to bless and and prosper you. So join us, and God will bless you in the name of. For those who are on YouTube, for those who are on YouTube, we want you to subscribe to our YouTube channel. That's our channel up on screen. God will bless you. Subscribe to it. And God will bless, increase, and prosper you in the name of Jesus. And also, press the notification button so that whenever you are coming, you are notified. And God will bless you mightily and marvelously in the name of Jesus. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. While I was on, I believe I saw Reverend Lani. God bless you, man of God. I do appreciate you. All the way from Leeds. He's a very powerful man of God. He has his program every Monday at 9 p.m. Tuesdays at 6 p.m. 
Thursdays at 6 p.m. and also Sundays at 9 a.m. on Manzayan Global Manzayan Global Ministries. Manzayan, Manzayan Global Ministry Facebook page. Go there, I tell you, you'll be blessed, you'll be refreshed, and you'll be transformed. So God will bless you. Thanks once again, man of God. God will bless. And I thank my wife as a phone who joined us. God bless you, powerful man of God. Don't forget to watch her tomorrow by the grace of God. And all those who have joined already, I do appreciate you. God will bless, increase, and prosper you mightily and marvelously in the name. I can see Auntie Tony Origi all the way from Nigeria. God bless you, man. We appreciate you for joining us. So I beg you to God bless you. God bless everyone for joining. God will bless, increase, and prosper you in the name of Jesus. I want to pray for you. Father, we thank you. I bless all those who have watched and those who will watch. Bless them in the name of Jesus. Do a new work. Hmm. I see, I don't know how I can describe it. I see a path that is very rough. Very rough path. Very rough path. Very rough. But I see a hand coming with, you know, this knife the builders use with cement. Making it, cementing it and making it smooth. And God saying, God is telling me to tell you all, including myself, that He's making our way smooth. He's making our way smooth. Now, if you want God to smoothen your way, just type it out. Smoothen my way or make my way smooth, whichever one you want. Smoothen, smoothen my way or smoothen my path or make my path smooth, whichever one. My way or path is the same thing. I see that hand. I see this. I see, see that hand walking and making it smooth. The path. The way is being made smooth. Father, we thank you. Let your name be glorified. And I pray that all our viewers will testify. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' precious and wonderful name. Please send in your testimonies, testimonies, testimonies. Very important. We always use testimonies every Thursday at our restoration hour. So send in your testimony. You can send your testimony on our Facebook page. That's Body of Crisis Center. Inbox it. Or on our messenger, you can use my Chris Adeniola or my wife's own Funke Adeniola. You can message us on our messenger with your testimony. And testimony is very important and God will bless you because it will encourage people that God answers prayers. I know that God has answered your prayers mightily and marvelously in the name of Jesus. Once again, thank you, thank you very much for watching. Thank you for being part of this. I know and I believe that God has blessed you already and you will begin to arise and shine and prosper and succeed. Success is your portion in the name of Jesus. Every good thing you lay your hands on, you're going to flourish and prosper in Jesus. Once again, thank you, thank you very much. God bless you. We'll see you tomorrow. But don't forget, we are back here on Thursday at 9 p.m. You tune in. The Lord will bless and increase and prosper. Thank you very much. God bless you. Have a nice evening. Bye-bye and bye-bye and bye-bye and bye-bye.